Squire Paladin. Sit down, gentlemen, and sit still. I've come to order a coffin for the first one of you who make moves. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel, headquarters of the man called Paladin. Good evening, Mr. Paladin. Good evening. Oh, here are the paper, Mr. Paladin. Oh, thanks, hey boy. Uh, I... Excuse me, must go a lady look for me. Lady? What lady? Mm. Well, I should say it is a lady. Oh, very sorry. I got that ticket to opera. All oh, sold out. Oh, I had so hoped to sit in that performance. And you still can. Huh? I couldn't help overhearing your difficulty. I have an opera box if you would care to be my guest. Oh, thank you. But we could not presume on your courtesy. Uh, we? Uh, my husband and I, Senor... Paladin. Oh. Now, of course, the invitation extends to him also. We have been looking for you, my dear. Oh, Miguel. Uh, Senor Paladin, this is my husband, Senor Rojas. Senor. Senor. And Dr. Mayhew. Great pleasure, Mr. Paladin. Dr. Mayhew. Senor Paladin has kindly offered us his box at the opera tonight. There were no more tickets. Very kind. Uh, Dr. Mayhew is, of course, included in my invitation. That's very gracious of you, Mr. Paladin. The invitation is accepted? We accept. On the condition that you join us and be our guest for dinner, Mr. Paladin. Is that not correct, my dear? Quite correct, Mr. Paladin. Until this evening, then, when is there? Mr. Paladin? Oh, 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 oh husband no like you. <laughs> I'm afraid you're right. But then, why should he? No one could be more at home with history than Edward R. Murrow. For more than 20 years now, he's focused his attention on world affairs, broadened his viewpoint with travel, and sharpened his perspective by meeting and getting to know many of the leading statesmen of our time. Five evenings a week on CBS Radio, Edward R. Murrow shares his experience with you. For a clear, concise report on today's important developments, join us on most of these same stations when it's time for Edward R. Murrow with the news. A fuller understanding of current events is waiting for you, too, on every lively edition of our World News Roundup. Seven mornings a week on CBS Radio, the World News Roundup takes you to the scene of the news for eyewitness reports by CBS News correspondents. Hear what's happening direct from where it's happening. Get the feeling of the news along with the facts as our World News Roundup comes your way at breakfast time tomorrow. Oh. Dr. Mayhew, time to wake up. Oh. The performance is over. Oh. Oh, oh, yes, yes, of course. I'm sorry, Mr. Paladin. Opera is not one of my special likes. Uh, uh, which one was this? The Marriage of Figaro by Mozart. Oh, oh, oh yes, of course. <laughs> well, at any rate, Don Miguel's wife seems to have enjoyed it. Sonia Maria is a remarkable woman, Doctor. Meant to savor and enjoy beautiful things. And I might comment for your particular benefit, Mr. Paladin, that Don Miguel is a remarkable man. Wait a minute. Huh? Oh, what is it? Someone behind the curtain. What? what? Don Miguel! Look out! Don Miguel! Senor Paladin, help him! My husband has been hurt. Please, Dona Maria, Dr. May, you will do all he can. Paladin, he needs treatment at once. We'll have to get him out of here. Yes, any news? 
No, not yet. We are still waiting. Well, I spoke to the police. There'll be no trouble. It was a clear case of self-defense. The man attacked your husband and was shot down. It was lucky Don Miguel was armed. Yes. Is he always armed? Uh, I do not know. Did you see the man who attacked your husband? Of course I saw him. Did you know him? No. The man looked very surprised at the way things turned oh, out. Oh, it doesn't, Doctor, make you hurry. Doña Maria, has Don Miguel ever been attacked like this before? Uh, no. Yes, 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 he has. Oh, there is no need to lie about it. It's an insane blood feud that has cost many lives already. This was bound to happen. They failed tonight. They will not fail another time. Blood feud? Perhaps I can help? This is not a tragic opera, senor. In this case, that is very... Re- Doctor, how is he? He's resting quietly. You may go to him now, Doña Maria. Uh, Doña Maria. Yes. Give him my card. This is not time for fun. Have gun. Will travel. Give it to him. Please. See, I will. Well? Uh, the wound itself isn't too serious, but I don't like the looks of it. Why, Doctor? What's the problem? There was poison on the knife blade. Nothing familiar. A plant substance of some sort. Well, the question is, will Don Miguel live? Yes. For perhaps a week. <laughs> Dr. Mayhew has told me I'm dying. That is why I sent for you, after I read your card. My wife has told you of a vendetta. Yes. Yes, she did. What do you want? Revenge? No. My task for you is much more personal. I want you to escort my body safely to my home in San Tomasino. And deliver it there to my wife. Doña Maria? Isn't she here in San Francisco? I sent her home this morning. I wish to die unobserved. Someone once commented you were a remarkable man. Do not misconstrue my sentimentality. The vendetta against our family includes the threat of mutilation of the body. In which case, the bestiality is complete. I would prefer that it did not happen to my body. Will you take the job? All right. One thousand dollars and expenses. We have a bargain. Good. You'll be paid by Maria upon said delivery of my body in San Tomasino. Thank you, Senor Paladin. San Francisco. What did you say, hey boy? Big robbery in San Francisco. Two hundred thirty thousand dollars. Oh, very careless. You read? No, I was reading something else. Don Miguel Rojas, distinguished visitor from Mexico, died last night of knife wounds, suffered last week when he was attacked by an unidentified assailant while attending the opera. Mr. Paladin? Yes? I am Mr. Wilkins. 
Oh, yes, the mortician. You sent for me. May I be of help to you? You can turn one of your clients over to me, Mr. Wilkins, the late Don Miguel Rojas. Here, this is a letter of authorization. The body is to go into Mexico. You'll need a certificate to cross the border, sir. I have that from Dr. Mayhew. And uh, how do you propose to transport the body? I've hired a stagecoach, Mr. Wilkins. Uh, when would you like to start? As soon as possible. Don Miguel will be ready. Good day, sir. Good day. Oh, how long you be gone, Mr. Paladin? Oh, 12 days, two weeks at the most. Now, why do you look like that? Hey, dead man. Oh, no good trip carrying dead man. Border stations are all alike, Mr. Paladin. Anybody here? You just try to go through without inspection. You'll find out if anybody's here. Where's your destination? San Tomasino. Name? Paladin. My driver is Timmons. Just the two of you? Uh, three. John Miguel. Hey! You can't take a dead body across the border. Yes, I can. There's a statute book. Read Article 8, page 14. You want to inspect the coffin? Open that thing up? Oh, not me. All right, then. What's the country like between here and San Tomasino? Well, empty. Except for a water hole called Loma Verde. The rest is rattlers and blow dirt. Oh, go on. Inspection's over. Let's go, Timmons. Yeah! Yeah! Hey! Of green we've seen, Mr. Paladin. Loma Verde's hardly a paradise. I don't like it. Huh. Can't say I like it much myself, but we won't be here long. At least we can water the horses. The sooner we can move on. Hold it. Why? We have company behind that rock. Huh? Yes, I lost minus. Bandits. Don't move. Raise your hand, Signore. Do what he says. Bueno. He's alone, Mr. Paladin. Him against us. Yeah. What are we going to do? We can let him kill us here, or we can fight him here. You say the word. Now. <laughs> Why? Very wise after such a foolish thing. Now climb down carefully. Now what? You may bury your friend if you wish. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Seems I know you from somewhere. Quite possibly. If I take off the handkerchief, you might remember where. Don Miguel. Of course. You're not a bad shot for a corpse. Do not make me prove that point again. Disinfectant anywhere kills disease germs on contact. It's Lysol in a new pine scent. Right. Now there's a new pine-scented Lysol. Now your home can be pine sweet and Lysol clean with genuine Lysol brand disinfectant. New pine-scented Lysol disinfects, deodorizes, deep cleans kitchen, bathroom, nursery, sick room. Keeps things fresh and sweet with no extra work. Pine-scented Lysol helps guard your home. In laboratory tests, Lysol's anti-germ action kept working for seven full days. So try this new pine-scented Lysol. Make your home... Pine, sweet, and Lysol clean. You can still get regular Lysol, too.
Turn around, please. Your gun. And now we can talk like gentlemen. Sure. Now, I would like to satisfy my curiosity about that cargo. Open up my coffin. Money. A great deal of it. The shipping payroll robbery. $230,000. You plan well. Dr. Mayhew was in on this? He has been paid off along with Mr. Wilkins, our undertaker. They made my death seem very convincing. But not as convincing as yours will be, Senor Paladin. What are you waiting for? First, you must help me with another burial. The money must be hidden until certain arrangements are made. Replace the lid and come down. I warn you, any false move will shorten your life and will assure you a much more unpleasant death than you now contemplate. Pick up the shovel. Now move. When you staged that attack at the opera, what about the man who was killed? The man was hired to play a part. I changed the ending of his scene. <laughs> no wonder he looked surprised. You cannot play chess without sacrificing pawn. Now, dig. All right. You're in check. Miguel. Miguel. Checkmate. Come back to the border. Hey, did you deliver that? The coffin's still up there on top. And the corpse is in the coach. Take a look. You see? Just sit where you are, mister, and start explaining. <laughs> that is the body in the coach. The coffin up here is filled with stolen money. What are you trying to pull, mister? You don't think I'm telling the truth? No. There's an easy way to prove it. Come on up here and open the coffin. All right, I will. Uh, here, uh, give me a hand. All right. Well, I'll be. What's your name? Farley. Mr. Farley, there's a lady in San Tomasino waiting for the body of her husband, whereupon she will pay me my fee. I need your help. What's this got to do with me? I thought you might want to get credit for the lady's arrest if she's a part of the plan. Well, what about all this money? What would we do with that? The colonel in command of the 3rd Cavalry at Nogales will sign for it and escort it back to San Francisco. All right. We'll turn the money over to him and start back. But how do we know if this lady is guilty or not? Suppose you leave that up to me, Mr. Farley. Surprised to see me? No, but I thought... I didn't I... wish to disturb the servants. You see, my errand is quite personal. Yes, my husband sent word before he... Would you like us to bring the coffin in this way? Very well. Excuse me. All right, Mr. Farney. I don't like this, Paladin. This is Mr. Farley, Doña Maria, Senora Rojas. How do you, ma'am? How do you do? I, I will get your money, Senor Farley. Uh, don't you think you should make certain that I have fulfilled my part of the bargain? Yes, you are right. Open the coffin. Farley. Yeah. Yeah. That is my husband. I will get your money. What do you think, Farley? Not guilty. 
No woman could be that calm. She thought her husband was alive and then saw him dead. Then you're satisfied she had nothing to do with him? Yeah. All right. Wait for me at the stagecoach. Yeah. Don't be too long. Where is your man, senor? There is a drink for him in the kitchen. You hid your surprise very well. And your grief. I had no grief for Miguel. I do not know how he died, but I can never thank you enough for giving me my freedom. My life with him was a nightmare. I can believe you. I saw it in your face. Goodbye, Dona Maria. Wait. It's your money. Uh, no, I'd rather not. Please, senor. It gives me pleasure to pay for my errors. Especially since this is the last payment. Very well. Should you come again to San Francisco, I hope you'll come with me to the opera. Ah, Dr. Mayhew. Oh, I, uh, I got your message, Mr. Paladin, but I'm afraid I can't give you too much time. I'm a very busy man. <laughs> All of us are. Ah, here comes another busy man. Hey? Mr. Wilkins, the undertaker. My dear Mr. Paladin, what can I do for you? Sit down, first of all. Thank you. Doctor. Uh, uh, Wilkins. <clears throat> well, Paladin, what is it you want? I'd like to order a coffin. A coffin? For whom? For whichever of you gentlemen makes the first move. Well, I... This is a derringer in case identification escapes you. Hey, boy. Mr. Paladin? Get me a policeman. On second thought, get me two policemen. One apiece. Oh, oh big story in papers. Dr. Mayhew and Mr. Wilkins all in jail. Where they belong, hey, boy. Ah, here we are. Oh, where are we? San Francisco Opera premiere tonight. Hey, boy, I want you to take this over to the opera house. Buy me a box. Oh. Now, what's the matter with you? Last time you go to opera, man get killed, money get stolen. Oh, big trouble. You know, Lon? <laughs> of course I learn. What would you have me do? No opera, no lady. <laughs> hey, boy, I'm afraid you have a lot to learn. <laughs> Gun Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Ken Cobb and adapted for radio by John Dawson. Featured in the cast were Lillian Bayef, Harry Bartell, Joseph Kearns, Howard Culver, Ralph Moody, and Vic Perrin. Hugh Douglas speaking. Join us again next week for Have Gun, Will Travel.